Welcome to Layer the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. And welcome to another edition of Midweek Maiden. This is where we get together in the middle of the week to talk some Iron Maiden. For this episode, I'm going to be listing my five favorite album openers from Iron Maiden. Nothing sets the mood for a record like a good album opener. And Iron Maiden has a lot of great album openers, but I wanted to break it down to my five favorite. So here we go. At number five from the Book of Souls, If Eternity Should Fail. I think this is a great album opener. It sets the mood for the record. I love sort of that uh, atmospheric intro there, the keyboard sound, uh, Bruce, the way he sings that intro and sort of sets up the song. I think it's a great song. It's got a lot of cool changes to it. I always love the middle section of that song when the drums are playing like those tom fills and everything. And it always reminds me of when I saw them on this tour and they opened up the show with this song and Bruce is sort of, you know, hunched over a bubbling cauldron or something and the way the lights were going. So I think it's a great album opener and it was a great show opener. All right, number four is also from the reunion or return of Bruce era of the band, the Rob era, and that is Wicker Man from Brave New World. Probably, you know, in the reunion era, if you think about the song that has stuck in their set list the most, I, I would think it would be Wicker Man. I mean, maybe Blood Brothers also, but Wicker Man is probably the song from the reunion era that's become a classic for the band, and it was a great... Bruce is back, the band is back, classic Maiden. It's, 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 it's got a huge chorus. It's got that Iron Maiden feel to the riffing. It's short and to the point, something that they would struggle with during their reunion era. It's just a great song, and the chorus just totally sells the song, the way that chorus comes in. It's just such a, you just want to sing along with it. And in my opinion, it's probably the classic song from uh, the reunion era of the band. Okay, number uh, three for me. I'm going to cheat a little bit on this, and I'm going to say Ides of March slash Wrathchild. But if you just want to go Ides of March, that's, that's cool too. It's a, a cool instrumental that sets up the mood for the record. It's very grand, majestic, epic sounding. I always think back, I tell the story the first time I saw Iron Maiden was on MTV when they were showing the Live at the Rainbow video and there's the clips of them walking down the steps. You see Paris has got his bass on and the Ides of March is playing over the PA system and they're getting ready to come out and then the way the Ides of March goes into Wrathchild is just super cool. So I love it. It has like kind of a classical gothy, gothic as in time period like feel to it. So Ides of March, great album opener. Absolutely love it. Okay, number two for me, the introduction of Nico McBrain to the band from Peace of Mind, Where Eagles Dare. Nico's drum fill at the beginning is classic, legendary, just a great way to jump into the album. It's kind of a brave song to start the record with because it's kind of long, but I love the lyrics. I love Bruce's vocals on this. I love the whole middle section where it's like the sound of firing machine guns and stuff like that. And just the whole feel of the song is just awesome. And Nico really pushes it along. It's a great song. The guitar solos are in it are great too. I love, I think it's Dave Murray that does like the first solo, all these like dive bar, bar bends and everything. It's just got this real like, you know, you're in an airplane and airplane battle. I just, I love the lyrics. It's just a fantastic song. Great, great album opener. There's a clip of them playing in, I believe it's Gothenburg, and it was one of the tours, uh, you know, recent tours they do where they were playing older material, and they open up the show with Where Eagles Dare, and it is just so epic, man. They're in like a stadium. The crowd goes crazy. That drum fill kicks in. There's like an intro over to PA, and then when that drum fill kicks in, the crowd just goes... Uh, nuts. So fantastic song. Love the feel of it. All right, and number one for me is from Power Slave, the song Ace is High. I mean, maybe this is true because of Live After Death, that whole Churchill speech into Ace is High is just so epic. This is a great song. It just comes flying out of the gates at you. Uh, Iron Maiden at the peak of their power at this point, the peak of their popularity probably too. It has so much energy. Bruce's delivery 
it's sort of like where Eagles Dare, where it, it puts you in the mood of the song. You feel like you're in an airplane pilot, rolling, turning, diving. You know, that, that whole thing is just great. And I hear this, this song, too, come on a lot over the PA system when you're, at a, when you're at a concert. And people just singing along, you know, the whole thing is just great, man. The chorus is so epic, the way it opens up. Like, you know, Bruce is spitting out all those fast lyrics, and all of a sudden it opens up in the chorus. Run, live, to fly. And those, like, dive bombs on the guitar and everything. And it's those, then they drop down, and it was real tight, that tight riff thing. That's... Just fantastic, man. To me, it's just Iron Maiden firing on all cylinders. So my number one favorite Iron Maiden uh, opener here is Aces High. All right, and like I said, I do like pretty much all the openers on their records. There are a few that I don't care for, and they come from the reunion era. I do not like Wildest Dreams from Dance of Death, and I do not like uh, A Different World from A Matter of Life and Death. Those two songs are kind of similar to me, like it's they're, they're shorter for this era of the band, but I don't know, they just, I don't like them. I don't like them as album openers. They should have been like the farther into the record or something. I don't know. They just don't work for me. My least favorite, two least favorite album openers from Iron Maiden. Okay, there you go. Midweek Maiden, my five favorite Iron Maiden album opener, openers. Let me know what your five are down there. Let me know just what some of your favorite Iron Maiden album openers are. And until we see you again, make sure you stay heavy, stay metal, and up the irons.